Welcome back to LobSiver. Hope you're doing well. Today, I'm going to walk you through how you can install Kali Linux on your Windows PC with the use of our virtual box. Now, just in case you didn't know, Kali Linux is regarded to be the best open system for hackers and pen testers because with Kali Linux, you will have access to a very wide variety of different kinds of tools uh, for pen testing. So I'm going to show you how you can, first of all, install our virtual box on your Windows PC, and then I'll show you exactly how you can install Kali Linux on your VirtualBox machine. So without wasting any time, let's get started. All right, so let's download some VirtualBox and you wanna to go to virtualbox.org and this is gonna be the homepage. You'll see this big blue button that says download VirtualBox 6.1. I'm gonna go ahead to click in here and then right here you'll have the platform packages. You've got for Windows, you've got for OS, Linux, and of course Solaris. So I'm running Windows, so I'm going to go ahead to download the Windows host version. But then you also want to download the uh, all supported platforms link right here. So you first of all go ahead, download whichever uh, package works on your current open system. And then when you download that, also go ahead to download the uh, extension pack. The extension pack will provide us with additional uh, functionalities like uh, USB uh, support, disk encryption and so on. I have already uh, downloaded both and you can see right now I do have them in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the actual virtual box application. It's about uh, 100 mega, 100,000 megabytes. I'm sorry, 100,000 kilobytes rather. So I'm going to go ahead now to uh, install this. So it's going to be pretty standard. I uh, just click on next, next. Uh, right here you have all these check boxes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click next as well. So you will get this warning that uh, your network interface will be reset, which is perfectly fine. So go ahead to click yes, and then click install, and then you know click yes again. And um, that's pretty much it. I mean, there is nothing complicated in here. It's just like you installing uh, any other kind of application on your computer. And uh, there you go. So right now I'm going to go ahead to start the Oracle Virtual Box. And this is what you should see. You should see something like this, you know, well, welcome to Virtual Box, stuff like that. And now once this has been installed, you want to go back to your folder and then, oops, sorry about that. Let me cancel this. Uh, you want to go back to your folder and then uh, install the extension pack, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead to double click on the extension pack and I'm going to say upgrade. And then uh, I agree to this license that I'm not gonna read. <laughs> gonna click on yes again. And now it's installing the extension packs and now it says the extension pack was installed successfully. All right, let's click, click okay. And there you go. So that's the very difficult way of installing <laughs> a virtual box. Now it's very, very easy, pretty straightforward. So please go ahead, install virtual box, install the extension pack. And I will see you in the very next video where I will now show you how to install uh, a virtual operating system on your virtual box machine. I'll see you then. So now that we have virtual box installed, we can install just about any kind of operating system that we want virtually on our machine. And from here, I could go to new, click on new, and then from here, you can see right now, I can choose the particular operating system I want to install. So for example, I could go to Linux, and then under Linux, I could choose the version. I could go with Debian, Fedora, Mandriva, all these are different versions of the Linux operating system. I could go even with Windows, and then I could install Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 2008, and of course, uh, with the Mac, I can choose different ones like the uh, Mac OS X, you know, 64-bit, 32-bit, you've got the Lion, Snow Leopard, and so on and so forth. However, we are going to be installing another operating system, and that's going to be the Kali Linux. Now, the reason why Kali Linux is very, very popular and why we shall be working with it is because it is like a very special operating system built specifically for hacking. It has, I believe, over 600 different applications per installed. 
that are used for scanning, hacking, pen testing, and so on. So think of it as the operating system of hackers. It's not the kind of operating system you would use to watch YouTube or you know send messages on Facebook or things like that. No, this is the operating system built specifically for hacking. So you want to go to Kali.org, then you want to go to downloads, and then, of course, there are different ways of installing Kali. You could install Kali Linux directly on your hard drive. You could install it using VMware, but we're using VirtualBox. So what you want to do is you want to scroll down here. Okay, and right here you will see the Kali Linux for VirtualBox. So I'm going to come in here. Note that I'm going with the 64-bit, so please be sure that your machine is 64-bit or 32-bit. Just make sure you're downloading the right uh, application. So I'm going to go, go here for the 64-bit. And then right here, you have the Kali Linux VMware images, but we're not going after that one. We're going after the Kali Linux virtual box images. So it's going to be the one right here. Kali Linux virtual box, 64-bit. And it's quite large. It's 3.3 gigabytes. So please go ahead, download it. I have already done so. So right here you can see I do have the Kali Linux application right here, .ova. So I'm going to double click on it right now. And there you go. So we're going to go ahead now to simply uh, install or rather import the operating system. So let's just go ahead and click on import. And then uh, you'll have this message saying, okay, do you agree? Yes, I agree. And uh, this could take anywhere between 10 seconds and maybe even 30 seconds. Oh, okay, so it says <laughs> it says six minutes. Well, that's interesting. I must have some other application running in the background. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video and simply resume once uh, this has finished important. All right, welcome back. So as you can see right now, it has finished installing and it took a little over a minute for the application to be imported. So uh, there you go. So for me right now, we could decide to uh, simply start the application if you wanted to. But what you could do is you could click on the menu button right here and then you simply go to details and then you will see all of these right here. Now keep in mind that because this is a virtual machine, it is still using resources from our host machine. So memory, processor, disk storage, things like that it's gonna make use of those from our host machine. So we can decide to allocate resources however we deem uh, fit uh, for the operating system. So to do that, you can go to settings right here, go to settings and then from here where you have system, you click in there. So from here right now, you can be begin to decide to either increase the memory allocated to the virtual machine or reduce the memory. Now the default is two gig as you can see right now. And I do have 16 gig of memory. So two gig is not gonna harm me in any way. You could get away with one gig, but I would only recommend one gig if you have, let's say eight gig on your host machine. But if you have 16 gig or more, uh, two gigabytes should be the least uh, amount of memory that you should be going with. Because keep in mind that the less memory your virtual machine has, the slower it will run. Okay. That's for the motherboard, and then you've got processor in here as well. So I've got eight CPUs, as you can see, eight processors. So the default here is going to be two processors for the virtual machine, and that's perfectly fine. Again, that's not going to harm me in any way. If you're using, let's say, four CPUs on your host machine, then you can always bring this down to just one uh, CPU. Okay, last but not least, let's come down here to network. Okay, and then right here under you, where you have adapter one, I want you to go with the NAT network right here. Okay, choose NAT network, and then you can just simply choose uh, the default one that you get right here. Just simply click on OK, and there you go. Now, going back here, let me just quickly point something out because this is a very, very common uh, issue. When you choose NAT network right here, if you don't have any uh, network to choose from, Check out the resources for this particular lesson. I'll provide a link to a video that will show you how to fix uh, this particular issue. Okay, so be sure to check out the link in the resources for that one. And then the reason why we are choosing the NAT network is because we want our virtual operating systems to get internet connectivity from our host machine. That's basically why we're going with the uh, NAT network. All right. 
I'm going to click on OK. And there you go. So now I'm going to go ahead to click on Start. And da da da, just like that, the operating system is going to start in just a second. And there you go. It is right here. I hope you can see that. Okay. So you can see it's booting in three seconds, two seconds, one second. And there you go. Let me expand this just a little bit more. So look at that. That is the logo for the Kali Linux. All right. So from here, we're going to have to provide the username and password and the default here will be Kali as the username. And then the password is also going to be Kali. Let's go ahead now to log in and voila, there you go. We've successfully installed and we've gotten access to our Kali our operating system. Well, there you have it. That's how to install Kali Linux using VirtualBox on your Windows machine. And I hope you found the tutorial useful. If you have any comments, be sure to use the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up. Share the video with anyone who may feel might benefit from it. And uh, I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.